Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 12 for August the 21st, 2016. We're still in Unit 3 entitled Life on God's Terms. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Finding Common Ground. Our devotional reading is taken from John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8. Our background scripture is taken from Romans uh, chapter 11 verses 11 through 36 and we'll be studying today from the 11th chapter of Romans um, verses 11 through 24. Our key verse reads, Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness otherwise you also will be cut off that is taken from Romans chapter 11 uh, verses verse 22 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to know what Paul said about Jews who have not become Christ's followers and the Gentiles who have become followers Secondly, to affirm that God has not rejected the Jews and that Gentile believers have not superseded the Jews, but that believing in Jesus is the fulfillment of creation. And the third aim is to develop some ecumenical ministry or possibly a ministry with Jewish or Muslim communities of faith. We have three outlines today from the Adult Quarterly uh, that we will be discussing. The first outline is entitled Salvation Comes to the Gentiles. The second outline is entitled In Part Now, The Whole Later. And the third outline is entitled In Grafted Branches. We certainly thank and praise God to be able to share the Sunday School lesson with you again. We pray that you have been studying, uh, following along with us. We have had um, a beautiful survey of the book of Romans um, from the first chapter. Uh, we've moved along. Today we are in the 11th chapter of the book of Romans. Uh, I want to read a little bit of the lesson background from our lesson standard uh, and we're going to give you some scriptures that you can follow along with us um, and study these passages so we can understand uh, the basics of this this approach from the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 9 the Apostle Paul began to discuss a situation that distressed him greatly the unbelief of his fellow Jews in last week's lesson we saw him recap the scriptural history of Israel to demonstrate that God controlled the nation's future while we may not understand why God chooses certain nations and people as his instruments I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 7 verses 18 through 20 Paul warned against considering God to be unjust in those decisions Romans chapter 9 verse 14 in the text just preceding that of today's lesson Paul asked and answered two questions concerning Israel first have God cast away his people no, Paul said, that cannot possibly be true. Uh, we see that in Romans chapter 11, verse 1. He supported his conclusion with the theme common to in the Old Testament uh, prophets that God had preserved a remnant of faithful Israelites. Romans chapter 11, verse 5. Also compare that with Isaiah chapter 10, uh, verse 21. Paul considered himself to be part of that remnant. Second, why didn't more Jews believe in Jesus as Paul did? His answer was that God had blinded many of the people of Israel in a way that precluded belief. 
that's in Romans chapter 11 verses 7 and 8 the apostle pointed out that this was nothing new for the people of Israel and he quoted scriptures to show his historical pattern of unbelief uh, a mixing of Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 4 Psalm 69 verse 22 and 23 and also Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10 all this led up to a further question the one that begins today's lesson it should be noted that uh, the uh, ninth chapter of Romans through the eleventh chapter of Romans is parenthetical uh, so we need to be able to study all of those chapters together uh, that we may get a, a, a very good understanding of the unfolding of God's grace and his dealings with the people of Israel uh, last week we talked about uh, the natural if you will uh, the biological a DNA of the Jews uh, and then we contrast that with the spiritual Israel and that's the one we really want to pay attention to because the Jews uh, uh, in their ignorance if you will they believe that natural DNA uh, or descent entitled them to prominence uh, with God uh, but not understanding the fact that the law or the study of the law should have led them to Jesus Christ. But I want to go to, before we get into the uh, study of this lesson from Romans chapter 11, uh, verses 11 through 24, I want to go back to Romans chapter 10. Uh, this is very familiar to us that we can get an understanding of the plight of, of the nation of Israel this is Paul here uh, Romans 10 beginning at verse 1 he says uh, brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes and that's what Israel missed the fact that they were not believing uh, in the message that God gave concerning his son they didn't believe Jesus when he came uh, and so what God did to them to the nation of Israel they received uh, as the Bible says in Romans chapter 11 a partial hardening so uh, until the full number of the Gentiles which is other nations or other races outside of the nation of Israel have been brought in to the faith uh, so the Gentiles believed the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ Israel did not so to that extent God uh, hardened them if you will or uh, they received uh, a judgment or an indictment from God that they could see but they couldn't see they could hear but they couldn't hear they couldn't understand the spiritual part of their heritage they are God's elect and and this is why we have to table uh, messages of, of reprobation toward Israel because God is still working in and on their behalf because as we learned last Sunday uh, God made them a promise through Abraham uh, and then through Isaac and and then Jacob these are the patriarchs or the founders of of, of God's promises and so the nation of Israel uh, uh, rejected all other uh, uh, messages concerning uh, uh, their relationship with God because they could only see the natural part of their uh, uh, promise uh, of uh, with God and from God so as we deal with the 11th chapter of Romans um, the first uh, 10 verses uh, from the 11th chapter deals with Israel's rejection not a total rejection uh, and then as we study today from the 11th verse of the 11th chapter uh, 
deals with Israel's rejection not final and we can appreciate this about God he can have mercy on on whomever he wants to have mercy on he can save uh, whoever he wants to save uh, he can do whatever he he is sovereign that way and so uh, what Paul is trying to do is help the Jews understand that they need to be saved and then uh, on, on the other side of that to help the Gentiles understand that don't gloat about Israel's situation because if you don't continue in the faith you will be cut off I want you to read as we gave you in the background scripture uh, uh, John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8 and we have to pay attention to Jesus sayings and teachings because he is telling us how to bear fruit in John 15 so let's get into this first outline entitled salvation comes to the Gentiles I also want you to go back and read Acts chapter 18 because Paul got into quite a bit of of, of trouble with the Jews in that passage or that chapter and so what he did because the Jews were not listening to him he said you know I'm gonna put you all to the side and I'm gonna turn my attention to the Gentiles I'm gonna preach this same gospel of grace to them and what happened was they accepted it so the Jews were envious and this was God's design to help them understand that they were not as privileged as they thought they were uh, all of us and this is a take-home message for all of us uh, if we are going to uh, uh, have some common ground as believers our common ground is a faith that we believe the same thing it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church if you are wanting to have common ground or have unity uh, with God it must be and it has to be a faith and this is the mistake that the Jews made first outline salvation comes to the Gentiles this is uh, Romans chapter 11 verse 11 and 12 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says again I ask did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery not at all rather because of their transgression salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious verse 12 but if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles how much greater riches will their fullness bring so what Paul is saying here is that the Jews have stumbled uh, in terms of their uh, reception of the message concerning Jesus Christ but they are not beyond recovery that is beautiful this is one of the reasons why uh, the gospel continues to come to us all of us can recognize and appreciate the fact that we didn't get it the first time we didn't accept God the first time so through God's grace and his mercy and repetition of the gospel we uh, ultimately accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so this is what we have to understand about the Jew so even though they have stumbled Paul wants everybody to know uh, uh, they are not beyond recovery in other words don't count God out and we should learn this lesson many people even today we are counting out as lost and they will never be anything well that's the same as counting God out and then we have the audacity to pray and ask God to do something about the situation or the individual so referring to verses 7 through 10 of chapter 11 Paul asked did Israel stumble so as to fall beyond recovery the idea of stumbling gave the implication that Israel would eventually fall and not get up again not at all Paul emphatically answered his own question God had not given up on Israel and that is beautiful to know so and we know that to be true because the Apostle Paul uh, salvation came to the Jew first uh, Paul was working with his own first he is concerned about his own uh, but they have rejected it so it goes on to say rather he had given the Gentiles the opportunity to receive salvation to make Israel 
envious. Again, Paul had already referred to the remnant who believed in Jesus in verses 1 through 10. This was the same remnant that was the first members of the Christian church. After all, Christianity during its early days was known as a special subset of Judaism. I want you to look at Acts chapter 24 verses 12 through 18. Because of his promise to Abraham, God could not turn his back on Israel. Let's say this about Jesus and we know this from Luke's gospel. Jesus came. He appeared to seek and to save that which is lost. So sinners, people that do not know the Lord are critical to the purpose of the cross. They are critical to the purpose of the shedding of the blood. They are critical to Calvary. They are critical to the promise of God and to the nature of God. Uh, uh, but if you go back over in John chapter 3, uh, uh, as we know very well, uh, John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. I like this, whosoever. Didn't say it had to be a Jew. Didn't say it had to be a Gentile. It doesn't matter in that uh, 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 natural origin to God. Uh, male, female. These things we have and take issue with. But God does not. This is spirit. This is all spirit. If you go back over to the discussion Jesus had with the Samaritan woman uh, in, in John chapter 4. We can see that Jesus was reaching out. So we have to understand this, that Paul is reaching out. He is concerned about the Jews being saved, Israel being saved, but this opportunity, I love this word. You and I have such an opportunity today to get in on the promise of God, and we must do that the same way that Abraham did. The Bible says concerning him that he believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. He believed the message. He believed what God said. And then he was credited. It was put on the books that he he was justified in the sight of God by faith. Nothing that we can do that, that, that can get this salvation uh, except we believe. And this is the message for Israel today. So the promise was given to the nation of Israel and no one else. And in nearly 2,000 years since the day of Pentecost, some Jews have been provoked to accept Christ. Moving from the remnant to the whole in verse 12, Paul proclaimed how glorious it would, ha it would be when all of Israel believed. The riches of the world, Gentiles, in other words, were not monetary. Rather, they were far more valuable it was the benefits associated with salvation, acceptance into God's family of promise. It's one of the highest distinctions that we could give and, and, and place upon one another in the body of Christ that we are brothers and sisters. Uh, don't take that term lightly. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And how did we get to be brothers and sisters in Christ? We are not naturally uh, uh, descendants of the same family, but we are spiritually descendants uh, of the message of Jesus Christ, of the promise, if you will. So in that fashion, we are brothers. We are family. We have a common unity in Christ because we believe the same message. That is the continuity that Paul is striving here to get the Jews to understand. And, and keep in mind, they were given the law and the commandments, but they were not able to keep the law. None of us are able to keep ourselves. So we have to remember these things. There's a question asked here in the quarterly. How were the unbelieving Jews God's enemies and yet at the same time? loved by God. That is a mystery of the ages. It is it is is something that's beyond our comprehension that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but yet God loved us so much that He gave His Son. He knew, He knows that we need a Savior. So ahead of time 
while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for the ungodly. So this is beautiful to understand the mysteries of God. And it's just, uh, you know, I, I was when I was studying this lesson, I thought about uh, uh, the phrase, I don't know. And we don't. If we shouldn't be afraid to say that if there is a situation that we cannot definitively address, it's okay to say, I don't know. So there was no reason for the Jews to think they were any better off. They didn't understand. And it's no different for the Gentile. They are no better off. They cannot say that they have something uh, uh, more than the other group has. So this is the part that we miss uh, sometimes even in the church today we spend a lot of time with denominations but when are we going to come together as brothers and sisters in the same faith that's important so our next outline the second one is entitled in part now the whole later this is Romans chapter 11 verses 13 through 16 and I'm going to read this again from the NIV translation I am talking to you Gentiles. This is verse 13. Inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? That's a question. Verse 16. If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. So let's talk about this a little bit so we can get some clarity from the Apostle Paul. In verse 13, Paul formally shared about his title of the Apostle to the Gentiles. The irony of Paul's words was that he was one of the most Jewish of Jews. I want you to look at Philippians chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Yet his great knowledge of the law, other languages and cultures made him the ideal candidate to deliver the message to the Gentile world. So Paul took great godly pride in his work. As we uh, read our focal verses, we have to keep in mind that the spread of the gospel during the first century was not done by accident. Jesus had already laid out the progression of the gospel message in the world. I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It started with the Jews in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, eventually going to the Gentiles uh, in the ends of the world. Still, Paul's sincere hope was that he would save some of his fellow Jews because of their envy of the Gentiles' conversion to Christianity. Uh, I want you to look, we, we read Romans chapter 10 verse 1. No matter how much he ministered to the Gentiles, Paul's heart was always with his people to accept Christ as the Messiah. When we consider how Paul fought so hard against Christianity before his Damascus Road conversion, it is easy to understand why he wanted so badly for his fellow Jews to accept Christ. Israel's rejection was not permanent, yet it did offer the opportunity for God to reconcile the Gentiles back to himself. Some Bible scholars view Paul's words in verse 15, their acceptance but life from the dead as a reference to Israel's fully accepting Christ as Messiah just before the rapture. Referring to uh, Numbers chapter 15 verses 17 through 21 with his reference to first fruits, Paul was referring to the patriarchs of the Old Testament. They had made all of Israel, the whole batch, holy. Likewise, Paul referred to the patriarchs as the root and the nation of Israel as the branches. So this promise was founded with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then it was extended uh, to the nation of Israel, God's elect. Uh, 
given the law and the commandments and the ordinances and they uh, should have as we said earlier should have been following the law as the law clearly told them that the Messiah would come the problem was when the Messiah arrived they didn't receive him as John says in his gospel in chapter 1 he came to his own his own received him not so this is beautiful to help us understand uh, but let's just talk a little bit about this envy because we don't want to take this in a negative light and all of us have had someone to tell us at some point in time that they want to be like us uh, I'll give you another example from Acts chapter 2 when Peter preached uh, and they saw the Holy Spirit falling on different ones uh, and so the, 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 the brothers asked at that time what shall we do? How do we get in on this thing? And that's how it happens. And so Peter gave them instructions. That they were to repent. Uh, if you go over to Acts chapter 2. I believe verse 37 and 38. They wanted what, the, what they had seen at Pentecost. They wanted to be a part of this. And this is how God works sometimes. He blesses us. And somebody might be admiring you. Uh, for your peace, for your temperance, uh, uh, for your attitude that you always seem to have a smile, what keeps you going, all of these sorts of things. And so uh, uh, God's intent was to show Israel that uh, uh, what they were rejecting, they could have. And so through the gospel message, all they had to do was believe and they would have been put in the same category as everyone else. Uh, that's beautiful to understand. There are no big eyes and no little U's. So this is the message uh, that we want to be able to uh, take away from this. But the question is asked in the quarterly, why are more tenured members sometimes envious of newer members? That's a good question. Sometimes in the church we have jealousy we have, as we see here, we have envy, we have strife, we have contention, we have all of these things because we feel that longevity entitles us to something more than a newcomer. Do you remember Paul talking to Timothy, uh, telling Timothy as a young man, he said, don't let anyone look down on you because of your youthfulness. You are a young man, but I know you have this gift. I've witnessed it uh, with your mother and your grandmother. It's on you, and I'm entrusting you uh, 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 with this gospel. Can you imagine the older statesman, if you will, and the Apostle Paul entrusting his ministry and legacy to a young man? Why? Because he had no reason to believe that he would have something less than Timothy. He says, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I did what I was supposed to do. And, and he said, in the future, there is laid up for me a crown uh, uh, of righteousness. And then it's, it's for there. It's a crown for everyone uh, 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 who loves the Lord. So this is very important for us to understand. We need this unity. Uh, and this, I, I just think it's interesting that these, this uh, epistle is drafted and given to the church so they could understand the gospel of grace apart from any works, any merit, any genealogy. Uh, it's just, and what I love about God, uh, He just blesses you uh, in spite of. Uh, when we believe the message, you're not going to get anything more than I am. I'm not going to get anything more than you are. So, I believe we understand this, but it's interesting, and it should be noted, these things are, are, are really issues for the church today, that we think we have something more than someone else, when we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We should be enjoying the oneness of the unity of faith. The last um, outline is entitled Engrafted Branches. This is Romans chapter 11 verses 17 through 24 again from the NIV translation. If some of the branches have broken off and you 
though a wild olive shoot have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root do not boast over those branches if you do consider this you do not support the root but the root supports you you will say then branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in verse 20 granted but they were broken off because of unbelief and you stand by faith do not be arrogant but be afraid verse 21 for if God did not spare the natural branches he will not spare you either consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God sternness to those who fail but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness otherwise you also will be cut off and if they do not persist in unbelief they will be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again verse 24 after all if you were cut off are cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree how much more readily will these the natural branches be grafted in to their own olive tree there's a lot to take in here and we're going to explain what Paul is saying here but the problem with the Jews in verse 20 why they were broken off out of fellowship with God it was not because of their natural DNA it was because of unbelief spiritual uh, application uh, had broken down failure to believe the message that God gave concerning his son let me say this Hebrews 11 6 without faith it is impossible to please God and that's where the Jews were they failed they were broken off they were not spiritual family members because they had no faith and that is an issue for us today the gospel comes two reasons number one to the unsaved for salvation for the Christian edification so we should be nourished, edified on the gospel if we're saved. But if we're not saved, you need to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to call on the name of the Lord. You need to believe that God uh, uh, raised Jesus from the dead. You need to uh, uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. This is the problem. We are struggling with unbelief. And so this was the separation and this why this is why the nation of Israel in this state were not the true Israel. The true Israel is the spiritual Israel. Given God's historical relationship with Israel, Paul placed the inclusion of the Gentiles into God's children of promise. I want you to look at Romans chapter 9 verse 8. In verses 17 through 24, the branches in verse 17 referred to the unbelieving Jews who had rejected Christ as the Messiah. Note that the tree Israel was not dead. Its roots ran deep because of the faith of the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then at God's appointed time, a wild olive shoot was grafted into this olive tree. This graft was a reference to the Gentiles because the true family of God is not based upon physical bloodlines but spiritual ones. The inclusion of the Gentiles was based upon the concept of the children of promise. So Gentiles were grafted in to the tree of Israel sharing in the nourishing sap from the olive tree. I hope you understand that. 
since some of the Gentile Christians had been criticizing the Jews for rejecting Christ, Paul warned them not to consider themselves superior to those of the branches. Verse 18, he made it clear that they had benefited from the rich heritage of faith of the Jewish patriarchs, not vice versa. Paul went on sharing how the unbelief of many Jews, branches broken off, had, had allowed the Gentiles an opportunity to receive salvation. Yet, it did not give the Gentiles grounds to brag. Why? Just as God had not spared the natural branches, which is Israel, he would do the same thing to the Gentiles if they were not obedient. Paul closed this section of his writing by summarizing verses 11 through 21. First, he reminded his readers and listeners about the nature of God. He is both stern and kind. Yes, he is a God of judgment, of the disobedient, but he is also a God of mercy to the obedient. So just as the Gentiles had been included in God's children of promise by his mercy, they could also be cut off because of his judgment of the disobedience. Paul still held out hope for his people, Israel, that God would, God would be able to graft them in again. Finally, Paul reminded the Gentiles that it was God's divine intervention, as he had done with Sarah and Rebecca, that had allowed them to be grafted into a cultivated olive tree, the children of promise. After all, it was not natural to graft a broken branch into a living tree. So the question is asked here, what is the continuing role of modern Israel in God's plans? Well, there is a remnant that will be saved. Remember old, the Old Testament, how the Lord delivered all of the children of Israel from Egypt, but not all of them made it into the promised land. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us the reason why they didn't make it in. The Bible said they were laid low in the wilderness. So the point is none of us can claim uh, that we are an exclusive group over the other. It was God's grace that saved the remnant of Israel. It is the same grace that saves the Gentile. We are not to look down on one another. We are not to gloat that someone has fallen. I love this in the commentary. It said God was able to graft them in again. And how that happens is they believe again. They accept Christ. So when we break fellowship with God through sin, disobedience, we break that fellowship. But how do we restore that? We repent of our sins. The first epistle of John chapter 1. Just so we understand. If any man says he does not have a fault. He is a lie. And the truth is not in him. So what God does back over in the first epistle of John chapter 1. He forgives us of our sin. After confession and we are cleansed. From all unrighteousness. We are restored again. Uh, and I want you to understand that about Israel and pray that they be restored. Don't see your brothers and sisters uh, wallowing and don't pray for them. Uh, you should read Galatians chapter uh, 6, uh, verse first few uh, verses there would help us to understand how to restore one another, how to look at a situation uh, with eyes of mercy and I want to read that to you before we conclude uh, this is Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you who are spiritual I want you to get this you who are spiritual it doesn't say natural 
you who understand, you spiritual ones, you spiritual ones of promise. It says, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Bear one another's burdens. That's verse 2. And so fulfill the law of Christ. I like this in verse 3. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. It can happen in the blink of an eye. We start thinking that we're somebody and the devil comes in with just a twig and we fall. We fall drastically. So don't ever think it can happen to you. All of us, I'll be the first one to tell you that I have struggled in my faith over the years. But I like uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. And this encourages me time and time again. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 says if we are faithless if if we are have no faith he God remains faithful he cannot deny himself all of us have been weak at some point in time but what we count on is the faithfulness of God the mercy of God, the love of God, the grace of God. He is able to continue on in doing what he said he was going to do in spite of our circumstances, in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our frailties. God is still able to bring you where he said he would. And that's what we have to understand about Israel. God is not through with the nation of Israel and he is going to continue to save as many as can be but here's the thing they will be our brothers and sisters by faith they will when God is finished working with them and moving them and convicting them and showing them the error of their ways even through the Holy Ghost they will accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior Why? Because God says it in the 11th chapter of Romans. And so all Israel will be saved. I want to offer this closing prayer in our lesson. Lord God, we thank you. You that uh, your saving power is not limited to one group. It is available to all. Let us help us to live lives worthy of our call to salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I certainly thank and praise God for just being able to understand these these points uh, about God's grace, uh, the unveiling of His promise and of His mercy to not just a particular group, but to all of us who will receive Him. So again, until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.